to the discussion with members of Peters Creek Sanitary regarding the Finleyville Alrema sewer line extension. Um, I'm assuming that you guys want to, it's my assumption that you guys want to start with the second. Yeah, I think yeah, Mr. Stanton is you probably have the floor to okay. present. Similar to what you presented in our last meeting. Yeah, I'll just give an introduction and then uh, my assistant Eric will, will take it from there. Um, what he had out earlier is a PowerPoint presentation kind of walking through the draft Act 537 plan for the Finleyville El Ramo Road planning area. Um, this summary is essentially the nuts and bolts of a document that's that thick that Mr. Stevens has that, that he's reviewed and uh, also issued the Board of Supervisors a letter. The presentation's very much in the same form that uh, the Peters Creek Authority Board reviewed at their August board meeting. They made a couple suggestions in terms of enlarging some of the slides to make them more readable. So those are in here for the supervisor's benefit, but essentially describes the nuts, um, the bolts of, of the project where it currently stands. And um, uh, the board did act um, at their meeting in August to forward the draft to the township for review and comment. Um, as the process moved forward uh, in, in terms of uh, constructing sanitary sewer collection system for the Finley L. Rainbow Road planning area, the gravity alternative uh, here in Union Township. With that said, I'll turn it over to Eric and, and we'll continue through the PowerPoint. Thank you, Mr. Stanton, on the Union Township Board. I'm going to go briefly through the PowerPoint. Can you guys hear okay? Starting on slide three of the PowerPoint, uh, you will find an outline of the previous and current planning efforts uh, to provide sanitary sewer service to the Finleyville Alrema Road planning area, which I'll refer to as FIFA for the remainder of this presentation. On slide four, you will find a preliminary schedule prepared by LSSE, which includes key milestones for the project. This schedule was included as part of the MOU. You will note an additional column labeled updated schedule has been added to reflect any slippage in the schedule moving forward. On slides five and six, you will see figures outlining the boundary of FIFA. The boundary generally runs from the top of Finley Bell Rainbow Road down past the intersection with Gilmore to the end of the PCSA service area. The PCSA service area is more clearly defined on slide eight. Skipping slide seven. On slides eight, nine, and ten, you'll find the proposed customer exhibit which highlights all existing parcels that are to be included as customers as part of the project, of which there are 33 in total, with an, with an anticipated 36 uh, future EDUs. A table can be found in Appendix D of the report, which provides more detailed information for each of those proposed customers, including tax parcel ID, etc. On slides 11 and 12, you'll find the existing PCSA tap and fee schedule, as well as the anticipated monthly PCSA sewer service fees, which the proposed 33 customers will be subject to. On slides 13 and 14, you will find figures that were included in Senate's 2020 Act 537 update, of which this is an amendment to. Alternative one, which consists of a public gravity sanitary sewer and lift station can be seen on slide 13. Alternative two, which consists of individual grinder pumps and a low pressure force main can be seen on slide 13. A summary of the updated life cycle cost analysis can be found on slide 15 for both of these alternatives. Based on the life cycle cost analysis, both alternatives are within 15% of the other. 
On slide 16, an exhibit of the selected alternative can be found. The selected alternative being alternative one, which again proposes a gravity public sanitary sewer system and lift station that will connect to existing PCSA sanitary sewers at the top of Phillyville Alramo Road. On slide 17, you will see the original and revised OPC for alternative one. As summarized on slide 17, the primary reasons for the cost increase are one, an increase in unit costs, and two, the inclusion of 14 additional customers within FIPA and the resulting design changes from the inclusion of those 14 additional customers, including additional wet well depth and total sewer length. It should be noted that the original OPC for Alternative 1, the cost per customer, which is the total cost divided by the number of customers the project is to, is to serve, was 58000 on the original OPC. For the revised OPC, the cost per customer is now 62000 So even though we do see a substantial increase, a lot of that can be attributed to adding those 14 additional customers. A summary of the allocated costs between Union Township and PCSA per the MOU can be found on slide 18. The remaining balance above the estimated 1.1 million for alternative one is approximately 950,000, which PCSA and Union Township are split evenly per the MOU. Slide 19, well, the final slide, includes some financing options to bridge the $950,000 gap. I think we'd open it now for more general question, answer, discussion. Good. The Nike site, this is the one where we have the salt shed, whatever you call it? Correct. There's a lot of issues with developing that property, you know that. It's listed on slide 15. Design includes between something that has like 30 EDUs and 69 EDUs, that's not really, that doesn't add much. Correct, yeah, it's it's a nominal cost. And, and obviously, we are aware that the, the deed for the Nike site does have some deed restrictions in there. It has a lot, I think it has a lot of deed. Yes. Closed building on it. And, and other elements, uh, there's also developable land around the Nike site. Okay, and around the Okay, so yeah, around the Nike site. So in, in terms of, of the planning area and, and the ultimate EDUs that could connect, one of the one of the things that the Peters Creek Board identified early in the planning phase is to make sure that there's enough room to accommodate a reasonable amount of, of growth such that you know once once the plan's built, um, the, you know, modular upgrades or things like that, you know, there could be some room for growth. And, and as Mr. Mr. Levy mentioned, that in terms of designing a lift station for 33 EDUs versus 69, it really doesn't add a lot of costs, if you will. And in terms of operability, um, towards the upper end of the number, you may have a little bit uh, more wet well volume that you manage just with float settings versus, you know, with the initial connection of 33 to use where you want to, you know, keep the hydraulic um, storage time in the lift station to a minimum. So that's essentially how that's managed. Uh, there's not necessarily 
um, 36 specific EDUs to that parcel 36 kind of for the general area. So the real cost increase has to do with adding the 14 additional homes. Yeah, the larger scope. And, and to be candid with you, the volatile construction market that we're still in, that um, um, unit prices and, and construction pricing is, is still highly variable. I think, you know, last year at this time, you're still hearing a lot of the impacts associated with being able to obtain materials um, associated with you know, um, iron and different things like that, different natural resources associated with the conflict going on in, in, in Ukraine and things like that. Uh, there's still some of that going on. Um, what we're seeing lately in terms of municipal bidding with a lot of the funding, the government funding that's out there, um, is that the service aspect of construction is a little bit short supply. Meaning that a lot of contractors, um, there's enough work out there that, that they're not bidding aggressively, um, or in some cases bidding at all on a lot of projects. So we're still in a volatile construction market, and you know while we have the opportunity to update both the Peters Creek Authority Board and the Board of Supervisors um, with the increased scope <coughs> with the prices that we're currently seeing in the bidding market, we felt the opportunity to revise that opinion of probable cost of what's shown in the, in the slideshow and in the, in the 537 plan. Just <coughs> expanding quickly on what Jason said about the Nike site, I think, you know, when you set out to do a 537 plan amendment, you look at all the <coughs> and you look at any areas that have any real potential for development. And while the Nike site specifically has many deep restrictions that we're familiar with, it is a it is a parcel that at some point in time could conceivably become something potentially. Mm -hmm. So it's a conservative approach to include it in the EDU count from that standpoint. So. And, and that my understanding is there's property that it could be developed. It's not in the Nike site. So behind the, the homes on Finneyville and Rome Road. Well, if you go through the Nike site property, it goes all the way back to the fifth end of the building on the property. So there is potential for development behind where the Nike site actually is located. I don't know if there's any interest in that. There is potential. So how much capacity is going to be in the the lift station is the line. In, in um, the lift station itself? Yeah, I mean, um, how many EDUs, I mean, how many, you know, third one, how many EDUs, how much excess potential? Correct. In, in, I'll, I'll speak to the lift station itself first because different facilities have different capacities. Correct, lines and everything else. Right. So the lift station itself currently is designed for 33 existing EDUs with the ultimate. Uh, build out of an additional 36 EDUs. That, and again, lift stations are pretty forgiving creatures, meaning that you design for, let's just say, round number 70 EDUs. Depending on how many times the pump stops and starts during a day, that determines its capacity. So there, it, it may be able to serve a lot more than the design value of 69 EDUs. How about the lines? The lines itself um, are eight inch diameter <coughs> sewers, okay. primarily on 1% uh, minimum grade, that just in round numbers, an eight inch diameter sewer on a 1% grade can, can convey the flow from 250 to 300 hours. So um, in, in terms of capacity relative to growth and expansion, that's not one of the uh, uh, key considerations, you know, with the project. There's room there to grow if, if, we, just if we just don't be like RUS, and that's my biggest concern. You know, sorry? I don't, we, we don't want to be like RUS when they design, when they get money from RUS, Rural Utility Service, where do you Correct. Yes, about? yes, absolutely. They always get limited in terms of capacity. Absolutely. So I think if you're going to do something, you want to have the ability when 
we're all part of wrong here that down the road they can say those people did something smart. Agreed. And and I, that that comment's valid. That mirrors our experience with RUS. Buying a pencil if you have RUS funding can be a challenge. Um, our board, um, in, in terms of uh, the direction given from our board, was pretty clear to to build a nominal capacity in in the design so that um, you know if there is any development interest or any interest in growth in there we wouldn't be recreating the wheel. And we feel we've, we've accommodated that. So Jason, if I look at slide six, as that orange area, we're sewering that entire area, right? Potentially. Yes. Whereas the project started sort of a much smaller sliver version of that where it was just 19 homes. Correct. And as, as you and others have looked into it, I think, you know, especially making the bend going up Gilmore Road, the thought was, if you're gonna go put something in, don't just do like a sliver of it, do the whole, that whole sort of the orange area. Correct. And that's why the cost is increased. Yeah, if you would truncate the bottom portion of, of that polygon, that was the original scope. In, in um, you know, the discussion as, you know, we met last February here, the discussion on our board meeting was let's accommodate all the needs here so we don't have to come back in the future and add additional lines things like that and i believe that discussion was also had at the township level you know since since february as well so that's one of the key reasons why the costs have gone up as well so you presented this to us last month we weren't happy about the cost rise that's correct and uh, at this point, though, you're, you're, this is the scope growth. There's no more scope growth, and you and you fully sewered the area as it get, gets built. Correct. And so the additional 900, almost a million dollars, would be split between the two, between Union Township and PCSA, which is hard to swallow. But there's opportunity for grant funding, right? Yes. And yes. Do you have a sense for whether that's feasible or? I, I do think that's feasible, and I think one of the strategies the, the, the Board of Supervisors took action on rising banks and the LSA grant funding program would be a good candidate. The CFA funding programs, PA Walt, Small Water and Sewer that come out in December would be good candidates. Um, Peters Creek uh, Sanitary Authority has been really successful with the county level local care account and um, our thought process that while we're here in September <coughs> preparing budgets for 2024 that you know having th these updated cost elements and being able to strategize um, is Mr. Stevens noted in his letter to collaborate on grantsmanship to help that project area to help supplement grant funding for that gap uh, is one of our recommendations moving forward. Has been submitted, I mean, this is just still a concept, right? It's a draft, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is a draft for the township review. The next steps generally would be in, in obviously taking it in a step.